everybody, it's Andre from the Eaglesoft Field Guide. Figured I'd come to you today to show you uh, the basics of how to create a new patient. This is very, very basic and it's great for uh, uh, brand new users. A uh, couple things that I always go through when I go through a skill development session uh, or back when I was a trainer. I always start with explaining the difference between what a person is and what a patient is. A person is anybody in Eaglesoft who could be a patient, could be a policyholder, or could be a responsible party. I'm not going to go down into those two, those two other categories, but we're going to talk about creating a patient today. All right. First thing you're going to do is hit on the person button. The reason it says person is because, like I said, it could be a bunch of different things. You're going to have a list. And before you enter a new person, make sure you search for that person first, all right? And a lot of things could change the way something is put out into Eaglesoft. If you came from another software that did uh, last names first, you know, it could be backwards. So search for the person before you enter a name. When you've determined that that person has not been entered into the system, hit new, and let's create a new person. All right, the ID number will be automatically generated. It is just a numerical sequence for when the patient was put into the system, all right? We're going to put a first name in here. I'm going to just put myself in here. Okay. Now, if I were a junior, a senior, a second or whatever, don't put a comma. Just put a space and junior. I'm not a junior, but just to give you an idea. All right. We're going to put a middle initial in here. All right. And then a preferred name. All right. If I go by Andre, leave Andre in there. If I go by something else, put that in the preferred name. If there's somebody who tells you, I only want to be called Dr. Jones, Dr. Smith, whatever, put that in there. That way you don't make a mistake in calling them their first name when they want to be called by their last name. All right. So only put a preferred name in there is if there is something they specifically want to be called by nickname whatever. Salutations, we don't, I mean, I typically don't tell offices to set those up, but if you want to, you can set up, you know, Dr. Shredan, all right, and then you can edit it down to whatever you want, all right? That's only going to be used if you're setting up a proper uh, letter that goes to the patient generated through Eaglesoft, but typically I don't set that up. And then for the sake of it, we're just going to set up a very simple person. So we're going to set up this person as a patient, we're going to set them up as the policyholder, and yes, I do want to use them as the policyholder when I get over here, and I want to set them up for responsible party. All right, this means that this patient or this person holds the policy, and this person gets the bill. That's what those two things mean. They hold the policy, they get the bill, and then you're going to put in their uh, mailing address: one, two, three, four Main Street. All right, and the next line is going to be for your apartment number. All right. This city will default to the city and state and zip code of the practice. Now, of course, you can change whatever you need to, but it will default. Just so you know why it defaults, it's going to default to the city and state of the practice. For the time being, I'm going to leave that alone. Home number. Start with a, a area code. Uh, 2759, all right. And then a work number. Over here is where an extension goes. And then a cell number. All right, and I always tell offices, you know, if you're going to do this properly, start left to right, top to bottom, left to right, top to bottom. And that way you're not worried about leaving something off, all right? Pager. If they have another number that comes up on caller ID, put it in there until you find out what it might be. That Maybe that's their work number, all right? And they didn't give it to you before, but put it into the pager field until you figure out what that is, all right? Uh, Eaglesoft will default to female. So the only time you have to change it is if they're male or when it comes to the next version of Eaglesoft, which I think will be version 22, there will be another option for other that will correspond with the ADA of uh, ADA's new form that has a third category. All right. For marital status, I always leave this as unknown until I really have a reason to change it. And the only reasons I ever change it are if they're divorced, separated, or widowed. 
Other than that, I always leave it as unknown because even if you assume that somebody is married, maybe they're not, all right? So I always just leave it unless I know that they are divorced, separated, or widowed. And that way I wanna make sure that I change those so I don't make the mistake of saying, oh, you should invite your husband or your wife or your whatever. But otherwise leave it as unknown. Birthdays. All right, you want all digits to go in here. All right, whoops, <laughs> I goofed. All right, so leave that, I mean, put that in there as you go. And then social, type that in there. All right, chart ID. This is how I would identify people above and beyond a nickname, all right? Now, this might sound crazy, but I use this field so that I can tell, you know, which John Smith is this? Oh, is that the tall guy? Is that the redhead guy? Is it the guy who drives the, who rides the Harley? So I put something in there so that I can identify this person. All right. So I can put in there, I'm the Eaglesoft guy, all right? That way, and I'll show you what happens, and I'll move this over to the side. You can see down here in my chart ID field on my test system, I can see little indicators. That there's an ortho case patient, all right? And there is a granddad and there's a perio patient. So I can quickly look down that list and imagine if it said on this list, you know, uh, imagine it's George Foreman and all of his sons are also George Foreman. Well, I could see here's dad and here's teenager and here's the college kid and here's the, so I could quickly look down that list and say, okay, over here it says George Foreman, but I can look over here and see, oh, that's the dad. Easy way to be able to use it. And that's just through that chart ID field. Now, everybody asks this question, will that show up any place in the, uh, like if you print something for the patient or if it's going to show up on the bill or anything like that, it will not, all right? It will not show up any place, all right? I can get that to show up on the schedule, but that's another story, all right? And then email addresses. That goes there. Oops, if I could spell, I'd be dangerous, but you get the idea, all right? And then do they... Do they uh, want to get email correspondence? Do you want to get text correspondence? You can put that in there, all right? And then who their employer is. And we're going to go down that rabbit hole in another video. And there's tons of other videos in, in, uh, in on YouTube for this. But what I would do is click on employer and I would pull up my employer list and I would choose an employer. For the time being, I'm just going to choose my company crew, put that in there. And now it's a thousand dollar max, $2,500 uh, $25 deductible, easy enough. That is all you need to do in order to create a new patient. We'll go in deeper when we talk about other things. The only thing that really is important is in the preferences to set up the patient's claim. I mean, I'm sorry, a member, a primary member ID number. If that insurance company in their preferences is set up to correspond to the primary member ID and not to the social. In a lot of instances, what I tell offices to do is uh, default to primary ID and also put the social in that number in that space too. All right. And then you're all set. That is creating a new patient. Very, very basic, but that is how to create a new patient. Hope that helps.